Madam President, I'd like to address another issue that comes up on the floor quite regularly, usually from speeches on the other side of the aisle. And I heard one of my colleagues in the Senate on the Republican side, who is a personal friend, talk about it today, and he's not the only one. And it's, of course, the issue of immigration. I've been involved in this issue for a long time. I can recall when I was first elected to the Senate, I got a phone call from Ted Kennedy. He said, I heard you're going to be on the Senate Judici Judiciary Committee. I said, that's right. He said, can I ask you to be a member of my uh, immigration subcommittee? Well, how do you say no to Ted Kennedy to start with? And I was fascinated by the invitation. And I got involved in the immigration debate then and over the years. At one point, I, I joined three other Democratic senators and four Republican senators, the so-called Gang of Eight, and tried to sit down and fix this broken immigration system. We actually wrote a bill, a good bill. It passed here on the floor of the Senate, I think 67 or 68 votes. Senator McCain was one of the contributors to it. Uh, Senator Flake of Arizona was also one of them. Uh, Senator Graham of South Carolina, Senator Rubio of Florida, Senator Schumer, Senator Bennett, Senator Menendez. We put our hearts and souls in that effort and put it together and brought it to the floor of the Senate and it was enacted into law. Comprehensive immigration law, uh, reform, I should say it passed the Senate. It failed to become enacted into law because the House of Representatives under Republican control wouldn't bring it up for a debate, let alone a vote. That was an unfortunate missed opportunity. It just comes down to this. We have not passed a significant immigration bill in the United States of America in 36 years. Everyone, but everyone, concedes that our immigration system is broken. There are parts of it that are just fundamentally unfair. There are parts of it which do not serve our nation. There are certain things we ought to all agree on, Democrats and Republicans. Let me give you three that I think are the starting points. First, we need a safe and secure border. I want to know who's coming into America and what they're bringing. In the age of terrorism, in the age of drugs, I want to know who's coming in and what they're bringing. Yes, we need border security. Secondly, we should never knowingly allow a dangerous person to come in this country, period. And if someone is here without legal protected status and they are dangerous to us, they're gone. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And the third point is an important one as well. We cannot allow everyone in the world who wants to come into the United States to arrive tomorrow. It just won't work. We have to have an orderly process, and we ought to show some caring and humanitarian instinct in that process too. Whether it's a refugee or a asylee, these are people who desperately need some safe place to be. And the United States has often opened its doors since World War II to show that kind of kindness. Our generation should do the same. Now, there are those who come to the floor and say, because so many people want to come into the United States, it's a mistake for us to give anybody legal status in this country because it's a green light. It's an incentive for even more to show up. That argument, I think, is not strong, and here's why. Each year, the orderly legal process in America, the naturalization process, makes one million new Americans from immigrants. It happens every year. And these people are following the law, every letter of it, to become legal in America. So to say we're going to cut them off and no longer allow them to become citizens makes no sense. And secondly, immigrants are a critical part of America. When my farmers come to me and tell me how desperately they need farm workers and they don't have enough immigrants to fill it, my natural reaction is, well, why don't you go to the Americans who live near your farms? And they say, Senator, we do. Nobody wants to do that backbreaking work of picking fruit and vegetables and all the hard labor that goes with it. We need immigrants to do it. 2.4 million farm workers come into the United States each year and pick the crops that end up on our tables, feeding our children and grandchildren and our families. 2.4 million. Did you know half of them are undocumented? That's a fact. Half of them are undocumented and they come to this country and get paid to do the worst and hardest work you can imagine. Go to a meat processing plant or a poultry processing plant. You pick it, any place in the United States. Look at the workforce that comes out of that gate at the end of the day. Majority of them, well, I should say 40% across the nation, 40% of them are immigrants who are working in that field. Tough, dangerous, hot, hard work. And they do it because others aren't lining up to do it in their place. 
That is part of America today. Immigrants are a critical element. And I might add one other element, which is timely. Think of all the times we tune into the Olympics and look at the people who make us just beam with pride with USA written across their chest on uniforms who are winning these medals and competing on behalf of us, the United States, in the Olympics. SUNY West of Minnesota, who is she? Well, it turns out that she is a child of a Hmong family. The Hmongs we remember from the Vietnam era were people who were killed because they sided with the United States and they were caught in the crossfire of war. Many of them settled in the United States, many in the state of Minnesota. And here is this young woman, this daughter of refugees, who is making us so proud as she stands on the podium crying her eyes out with USA written on her uniform, proudly holding that gold medal. We cheer her on, and yet when it comes to the United States Senate, there are no cheers in some, from some quarters. These are immigrants, and many people th look at them negatively. I am not one of those people. There has to be a better way. There has to be a humane way for us, this nation of immigrants, for us to be able to have a system that is fair, that really is based on the three principles I mentioned. Border security, no dangerous persons, and we've got to have an orderly process in, to, to come up with. We're gonna see in the next few days, I'm sure of it, a uh, debate on the budget resolution, and it's gonna be, in some part, a uh, debate on immigration policy. I'm certainly ready for it. I hope my colleagues are too, and I hope that they'll keep an open mind to a process of creating a new immigration policy in America that really reflects our values, that is fair to the people who seek to be part of our future, and recognize the great heritage which the immigrants have brought to this country. I hope those people who are on the other side, who don't feel as I do, will take the time to meet some of these immigrant people. Meet my dreamers. These young people who I first started championing 20 years ago have lived lives in the shadow of doubt for decades. They were told they were undocumented, they could be deported at any moment, and yet they soldiered on. They worked hard. They went to school. They did remarkable things, becoming doctors and nurses and teachers and entrepreneurs and even members of our military. They are amazing. They've never let me down. They are just terrific young people. I think they deserve a chance to become part of America's future. I think they've earned it. And I think we ought to have that kind of attitude in our minds when we talk about the role of immigrants in the future of America. Madam President, I yield the floor.